celestial navigation was one of the ways that the stars were used in ancient Arabia, and that even continues until this day. My name is Danielle Adams. I'm a recent graduate of the University of Arizona with a PhD in Middle Eastern and North African Studies, where I focused on the cultural astronomy of Arabia. One of the ways that the stars were used in Arabia long ago was for celestial navigation. Just as people would use the stars for navigation on the oceans and seas, so in the deserts, the sand dunes would shift and change a lot, and so you would need to use the stars for navigation. Now, typically for navigation, you would first think of the North Star. It points to north, and you would want to uh, use that as a reference point for direction. Well, about 1500, 1400 years ago in Arabia, there was no North Star. Through a process called precession of the equinoxes, the axis of the Earth wobbles a bit as we travel in our course around the Sun. Over the next 26,000 years, the North Star will change from our current North Star, Polaris, to various other stars in other constellations as the axis of the Earth circles around the sky. In another 26,000 years, we will have Polaris as our North Star. So if we roll back time uh, about 1500 years ago, then we'll see that the North Celestial Pole was not next to any star. It lay about equidistant between our current North Star, Polaris, and a pair of stars that today we know as Kokob and Farkad. These three stars together used to dance around the North Celestial Pole, and together they gave the direction of north for those who were crossing the deserts of Arabia and on into the Sahara and North Africa, as well as going eastward into Persia. For the Arabs at the time, Polaris was known as Al Jedi, the goat kid, and the other two stars were known together as Al Farqadan, the two wild cow calves, and together these stars danced around the North Celestial Pole, indicating the direction of north. These stars were well known even before the development of Islam. The poet El Asha, who died in 629 CE, said this about the goat kid and the wild cow calf. For when she set out at nightfall, she was seeing two watchers, the goat kid, which does not set, and the wild cow calf. So this talks about these stars as not setting. Over time, the use of these stars as indicating the direction of north and not setting also became figurative. And so they were seen as steadfast stars that could be relied upon. The poet Hadrami said, and by the life of your father, every brother will withdraw from his own brother except for the two wild cow calves. People may come and go, but these two stars would never set. There were other stars also used in celestial navigation. If we look far to the south, we see that as nights pass, stars move quite a bit. However, at the latitude of Arabia, we can see a very bright star. In fact, the second brightest star in the sky that we know today as Canopus. The Arabs knew this star as Suhail. This star is so far south from the latitudes of ancient Arabia that whenever it was above the horizon, it didn't stay very long. This star would rise just a bit to the east of due south and a few hours later set just a bit to the west of due south. So even though this star moved quite a lot and wasn't visible for a lot of the year, whenever it was up, this star, Suhail, marked the direction of south, and it marked it with great accuracy and reliability. So Suhail also was seen as an indicator of the southern direction. So together you have Suhail in the south, uh, going up and down uh, as an unreliable star, but indicating south when it was there. And then you have the goat kid and the two wild cow calves in the north, always present, never setting below the horizon, indicating the direction of north. 
Some years ago, I had a conversation with a camel herder in North Africa, and even though he drove a 4x4 through the desert to travel from place to place, he told me that he still relied upon the stars to see where he was going because GPS could be wrong, but the stars can never be wrong. If you'd like more information about these stars, you can go to onesky.arizona.edu and see more examples of how the stars were used in calendars and stories. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Active Galactic Videos on YouTube and follow our other social media.